Today on Your Money, Your Wealth podcast number 356, if you're in the 35% tax bracket, should you contribute to a traditional 401k or a Roth 401k for retirement? Should a self-employed investor in cryptocurrency do Roth conversions or tax gain harvest their crypto? Joan Big Al also spitball a retirement plan for a 35-year-old couple who wants to know if they're on track to retire with $5 million at age 60. Plus, do the SECURE Act rules for required minimum distributions apply when inheriting an inherited IRA? The fellas also comment on the latest version of the Build Back Better Act currently being considered by the Senate. Visit yourmoneyyourwealth.com and click Ask Joe and Al on air to send in your money questions via email or voice message. And you know, we told you that voice messages get first priority and boy, did you hear that? We're kicking it off with four of your voice messages today. I'm producer Andy Last and here are the hosts of Your Money, Your Wealth, Joe Anderson, CFP and Big Al Clopine, CPA. What do we got? Shake it, bake. Hi, Joe, Big Al, and Andy. This is Shake and Bake from Texas. So my question today is, should I be contributing to the 401k or the Roth 401k portion of my employer-based plan? Here's some of my numbers. I'm 49 years old, claiming a head of household because I'm divorced with two kids. They're both in college, but colleges is already covered. I have two dogs, Lola, who's a Cavapoo, and Riker, who is a rescue. He's a boxer beagle mix. I drive a 2017 Hyundai Santa Fe Sport that's paid for. I have a steady job. I make $140,000 base, $20,000 in restricted stock units, and $80,000 bonus. I have $120,000 sitting in cash. 30,000 in a sinking fund for my next car. I have no debts, the house and the car both paid for. My 401k has 815,000 in it. The Roth 401k has 58,000 in it. I have a brokerage account with 85,000 and a Roth IRA, which I have been backdooring for about 10 years. It's got 86,000 in it. So I have 18 to 20 years left to work. I'm currently in the 35% tax bracket. These last couple of years, I've put all 19,500 into the Roth 401k portion of my employer plan. Is this the best place or should I be taking tax advantage of the regular 401k to help reduce my tax burden now? I go back and forth between the tax advantage of the 401k versus the Roth 401k where it can grow for the next 18 to 20 years and help even out my the contributions between my various vehicles. I'll be heading, hitting 50 next year where I can contribute $26,000. And I just wanted to level set with you to make sure that I'm going about my investments correctly before I jump off of the deep end and, and do the 26,000 a year. Thank you very much. Again, Shake and Bake from Texas. Appreciate everything you guys do. I love listening to your podcast. Shake and Bake. Wow. Love it. We haven't had Shake and Bake before. Love Shake and Bake. (laughs) Um, I know what my answer is, and I know what um, uh, our buddy Big Al is. We're going to go back and forth. You start. So, uh, first of all, I love how Shake and Bake goes. I've been backdooring it for about 10 (laughs) years. Yeah, she turns it into a verb. That's great. It's yeah. like we're backdooring it. Yeah, right. Oh, oh boy. Um, <laughs> so, are we clear we're talking about a Roth? We are. Roth, <laughs> uh, backdoor Roth IRA. Yeah, I'm just curious. And um, I'm going with Roth 401k 100% all day, every day. And here's my reasoning. Okay, tell me. So, it, it, you know, another thing I love about Shake and Bake, you know, she's super excited about turning 50 so she can put $26,000 in. She's like, I'm so excited about going 50. Yeah. Now I can do 26,000. You, you got that to look forward to. <laughs> That's several years ago. <laughs> I don't but think so. It's like several. <laughs> when I'm looking at 50, I'm not thinking about 26,000 a year. I'm like, God, oh, I'm you are. Old. You're dreaming about it right <laughs> now. Like, That's why old. for your entire 40s, you've been saying that you're in your early 40s, right? That's pretty much. Yeah. That's pretty much. <laughs> still in my early 40s, um, <laughs> depending on how you look at it. Got it. Okay. So here's why. It, it, I'm going to, even though she's in the 35% tax bracket, if you take a look, she's got $800,000 in a 401k plan that's already pre-taxed. That's growing over the next 20 some odd years. So that could double a couple of different times. So let's say she's going to have several million dollars in a pre-tax 401k account. Would you agree with that? I do. And if she continues to add her $26,000 next year into a pre-tax account, you know, that's just going to build the overall tax issue down the road. 
I have no idea what the tax code is going to be in 26 years from now, but I would much rather have a lot more money in a tax-free account 26 years from now than in a taxable account. She makes very good income, but she's also in a very high tax bracket, but she does not, I guarantee you, she will not miss the tax deduction. She doesn't even feel it. It's already going into a, a, a post-tax account. It's going into a Roth account. So she's already used to paying or spending what the paycheck is. Why change? Okay. Uh, and so I, I agree and disagree. All right. So I agree with that last comment. To me, that's the key. The key is you're already used to this net pay. If you had extra net pay, would you save it? What well, most people spend, right? And so maybe you had a little bit higher quality life, but you, but maybe not, right? But you end up spending. You, people end up spending what their net pay right. is. If she, if she went pre-tax, her paycheck would probably be, um, if she kept it at the you know, nineteen five that she's saving, it's probably what five or five hundred dollars more right. per paycheck, right? Right, because of the tax savings that she's getting. Yeah. Um, so that, yeah. So I agree with you there, uh, but I disagree from a CPA standpoint, as you know, because the tax rate's thirty five percent plus. Well, there's no state because it's Texas, so that's good. Um, and chances are, like, let's say, let's say she's got three million dollars in retirement and so what's the rmd required minimum distribution on that's one hundred twenty thousand. it's a lot less than what her current salary is she'll probably be in a lower tax bracket but you got to add social security and maybe there's pension maybe not so that's the other side of this that's the accountant side which is what tax bracket are you in now versus tax bracket later but i so from that standpoint i would say do the regular 401k but i do agree with you joe in that most people spend their net pay anyway. So if you're going to spend your net pay and you, you've learned how to live off a lesser net pay by doing the Roth, continue it. Right. Because the, the tax savings that you're receiving by going pre-tax, I don't know if you're saving them, right? Or if you would save it. Right. That, yeah. If you would. So And, and, and some people are, are ultra focused on that and save, and then they can kind of do that tax arbitrage. They're higher tax bracket now than retirement, but... Um, Anyway, you could argue this both ways. Right. I, I think uh, people are sick of me reading the questions. <laughs> so they're starting to call them in and so stuff. Like, I can't stand this well, guy it's, reading a it's, question it's, one more time. It's good for you. You take, you get a break. Yeah. Man, I remember the first couple. <laughs> <laughs> remember when you and I used to do commercials and it would take it us an hour to do 30 seconds? Yeah, just like a 30 second read. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad. All right. We got um, Alex. He, he called in. Hey, gang. My name is Alex and my wife Jessica and I are both 35 and we're looking for a general spitball and some advice. So to get right into it, the household breakdowns are as follows. Household income is about $180,000 a year gross. We've got $30,000 in our daughter's 529, $26,000 in 401ks, $100,000 in Roth IRA, $600,000 in brokerage account comprised of total U.S. market, world market, and S&P 500 tracking funds, and about $180,000 in cash. We both contribute 10% to our 401ks and max out a Roth each year. I also invest about $500 a month into that brokerage account. Right now, we're also putting an additional $1,500 a month to the mortgage, which we owe $280,000 on, and with the current loan and plan, we will have it paid off in 10 years. So I wanted to know if we're on track as far as retirement goes, we're hoping to have $5 million in retirement by age 60. And also if we should divert that extra mortgage money to the brokerage account, knowing the power of the market and seeing how we could pay the house off still potentially within that 10 years or before and still have money left over from the growth while understanding the risk and tax implications involved. We have a 13 year old chocolate lab 15 year old Italian Greyhound. I drive a 2019 Dodge 2500 Mega Cab Diesel. The old lady's got 2021 Tesla Model Y performance. Both are which paid off. And if you haven't had one, go home and whip up a paper plane. It is the best drink ever. Thanks, guys. Heard of that? Ooh, paper plane? I'm going to have a paper plane. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to make them. I don't know how to drink them. Never heard of it. All right. <clears throat> what the? This. Um... Well, okay. so he wants a financial plan. That's fine. Let's, let's whip it up. Okay. Okay. Do you got a calculator, Big Al? Uh, yeah, I got my got my phone. Okay. So what? The, six seven. Um, Probably got about eight, eight, eight nine, nine, nine hundred thousand. Call it. Yeah, let's call it nine hundred thousand dollars. Let's start with that. Uh, that's, they're maxing that's out four hundred one k plans, right? So that's fifty thousand dollars a year, roughly. 
Yeah, well, they're under 50, though, but close That's, enough. Yeah, call it 40,000. Yeah, we'll do 40. So 900,000, then we'll add 40 as the payment. No, it's 35, 45, 55. So you got 25 years, 7%. Yeah, we'll do 25 years. We'll do 7%. And the yeah. future value of that future is... value is... Yeah, I did something wrong. <laughs> well, a few things. Do you pay off the mortgage? Do you let it ride? I mean, I mean, interest rates are so low right now. I would not necessarily pay it out because it's only two hundred eighty thousand dollars. If you ever got in trouble, you could pay it off with the brokerage account that you have at right. six hundred thousand. So I would keep the mortgage as is. Um, you know, if you want to pay a little bit extra, I think you're paying what fifteen hundred dollars a month. Uh, what do you got for a future value? Seven point eight million. Seven point eight million. So eight million dollars, um, Alex. So yeah, you're, you're you're definitely on track. What I don't understand is how the money came to be. If you have $180,000 a year gross income and you're saving and you're fully funding 401k plans um, and you only have $100,000 in the 401k plan. So you just started fully funding the 401k plans, but you have 600,000 in a brokerage. So maybe, you know, so you had some stock options. Yeah, maybe. that's what I'm thinking. You know, generally this age, that amount of brokerage versus uh, retirement, it's stock options or inheritance. Yeah, usually. Yep. So maybe works for a tech company yep. or yep. Uh, things like that. So yeah, you're definitely on track. Um, right now, if you just saved the, the full twenty thousand, it's nineteen five. But let's say twenty thousand for you and Jessica into the four hundred one k plans. Um, you get seven percent on your money over the next twenty five years with the amount of money that you have. You got eight million bucks. Yeah. By the way, my first answer was thirty seven million. <laughs> <laughs> Because I put I put forty thousand per month. month. Yeah. Yes. I realized no, that's not right. So if you say forty thousand per month, <laughs> yeah, thirty seven. You'll have thirty seven million, million. gold. <laughs> you'll have big Al type money. <laughs> yeah, I think he's on track. But what he needs to be looking at, he's diversified too. Look at. So this is a really good example. If he's going to save forty thousand dollars a year, and all of a sudden all this money grows, um, and he's going to jam everything in, let's say into the four hundred one k plan, he's going to have an non-diversified portfolio from a tax perspective sure. when he retires at 65. So looking at, so this is why it's really good to catch people when they're younger, when they look at a saving strategy over the next 20, 25 years. Right. Because most clients, most individuals, when they started saving back, in, let's say in their thirties, what did they do? They just, everything was in a 401k plan. And then all of a sudden they come to us now and they have millions of dollars in a 401k plan and they have very little assets in any other area. Right. So when people start getting this and they're like, you know what, I want to be a little bit more diversified. So it's not going to be saving everything into the 401k plan. So he's already mapping things out. He goes, I want to be debt free, but does it make sense for me to pay out the mortgage? Well, you could take $280,000 out today and pay off your mortgage, but you just guaranteed yourself a rate of return of 2.8% or whatever mortgage yeah. rate that you have. Sure. So over the next 20, 30 years, do you think you could get more than whatever your mortgage is? That's arbitrage. Right. right. So you will be paying interest, but hopefully you'll be making more rate of return in your overall investments that outpace the interest that you're paying the bank. Yeah, I think that's a good point because people look at their their mortgage and they look at how much interest they're going to pay over 30 years and they think, man, that's incredible. But they haven't really figured out what they could have earned and they get to keep the difference. So let's say you pay twenty thousand dollars of interest, but you made thirty thousand dollars in, in you know, income, right? Right. So you still net out ten thousand. You're still ahead of the game. Yeah, but there's it, there's risk, and of course, course. yeah, right. it could go the other way. It could right, and it, it does in the short term sometimes. All right, thanks for the question. Hopefully that helps, Alex. I'm gonna definitely have a little paper plane. You know, far too often retirement funds actually fall short of where they should be, and many of us have no idea how to catch up. Our new guide will empower you with tips to fast track your retirement, regardless of how much your account balance is today. Pour yourself a paper plane or your drink of choice and click the link in the description of today's episode in your podcast app to download the guide. You'll learn the steps to take to boost your retirement savings, stay on track and keep more of what you make. And here's a Christmas tip. Print out our guide. They make great stocking stuffers. Share the YMYW podcast and all the free financial resources with your friends, family and colleagues. It gives them the gift of financial information and entertainment and it's absolutely the best gift you can give us because it helps us to grow the show happy holidays ymyw family uh let's go uh to our next question hello ymyw team johnny g calling back in from somewhere in iowa I still drive my 2016 ford fusion now that it's too cold to drive my motorcycle uh, which is a honda shadow 1100 
Uh, and drink of choice is tequila on the rocks these days, uh, preferably some Casamigos. Uh, quick overview before getting into my questions. Uh, I'm 27 and single. Uh, I got 58,000 in my Roth, 40,000 in my simple IRA, 30,000 in my HSA, and 44,000 in my brokerage. Uh, I'm a couple years into starting my small business and due to depreciation and putting most of my income back into the business and living off the savings, I've, I'll be keeping myself in the 12% tax bracket this year, as well as 2022. But then from 2023 on, I see myself probably being in the 24% or higher. But this year, trying to keep myself at the top of the 12, actually a little lower than the top of the 12 after the standard deduction, because I see the ACA ledge appears to be at 51,500. Uh, so I want to stay below that. And so after my salary, plus already locked in capital gains, um, and then maxing out my simple IRA and my SHA contributions, that leaves me with about $34,000 of space to that ACA ledge. So my question is, what do you see as a better use for that 34000 I could convert almost my entire simple IRA into my Roth IRA, paying the 12% on that $34,000 conversion. But then obviously that's in there to grow tax-free for the next four to five decades for me. Or wondering if you think I should lock in some capital gains on my brokerage account and get the step up in basis and pay 0% since I'm in the 12% bracket on those capital gains. This is because of that 44000 in my brokerage account, it's mainly cryptocurrency and it has a cost basis of about $9,000. Um, seen some pretty good gains over the past couple of years, uh, obviously. Um, they are long-term gains, so they would be at 0% capital gains while in the 12% bracket. I do like my crypto holdings for the long term. So I would be purchasing them right back after selling them and just taking the step up in basis and not paying taxes on it. And because based off of my readings, there's no wash sale rule uh, for cryptocurrency yet. So just wondering what you guys think I should do. Like I said, I'll have 2021 and 2022 in the 12% bracket before popping up to probably the 20 straight past the 22 and into the 24% for in the year. And then that's where my voicemail cut him off. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Wow. This dude's legit. Johnny yeah, G, man. Got some smart listeners. Man, the guy's 27 years old. He's, right? he's talking step up in basis. <laughs> he's been Why? listening to YMYW. So that yeah. he's, he's either in the industry or he listens to our show all the time. No, the guy's killing it. <laughs> a couple of things. All right. Um, so <clears throat> if you sell a capital asset, that's any type of asset that's outside a retirement account. If you are in the lower two brackets, the 10 and 12% tax bracket, um, there is no capital gains tax. He's also kind of looking at the ACA, you know, ledge there, little American or <laughs> affordable care act. I don't know where, yeah. where American which, came into which, that. When you said American, I go, hmm, <laughs> now I'm mixed up myself. <laughs> affordable Afford care. Act. That's Obamacare. Yeah. That's what we used to call it. Yeah. I never called it that. I People did. got upset, but wrote yeah. me letters. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think it was me. So he also gets some subsidies because of, he's in a fairly low income tax bracket where he's doing the math. He's taking a look at everything. He's looking at his options. He's, sure. he's saying, okay, well, I, yeah, I'm a small business owner. I want to make sure that my income stays in certain levels, certain areas. I'm going to reinvest back into the business. And over the next couple of years, I'm going to keep my income low. And I have some room for me to create more income. Right. Right. So then I could either do a Roth conversion, taking the money from his retirement account and converting that into a Roth IRA. Um, or he could sell some crypto. Right. Doji coin. Get a or, step up in basis. He wants to keep it, right? So he he's going to buy it back, buy it right back, which is fine. It's called tax, yeah, uh, gain harvesting. There's no problem with that. It doesn't have to be crypto. It can be anything. Yeah, there, there's the wash sale rule is at a loss. Yeah, you're selling at a gain, right? So there is no wash sale rule on a gain, right? It's called tax gain harvesting. So you're selling it in that or zero percent capital gains, yeah, and you can just buying it back. You can buy it same day. It doesn't really matter. Correct. Um, couple of things. He's got a simple plan. There's some rules with the simple. Um, you're putting money into the simple and you want to convert the simple. I don't know if he can convert the simple because it has to be held in place for a certain period of time yeah, without like, penalties. Like two years, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, I think And so. I think he's already making contributions there. So sure, got to, got to check that. Got to check that. I would get rid of the simple altogether and do a solo 401k plan. Yeah, I like that too. And I would convert the simple if you could. I, I would like, I'd rather do that at age 27 and have all those years of tax-free growth. For sure. Um, and then buy the crypto in the Roth. Yeah. 
You know oh, what I mean? Oh, that'd be cool. The yeah. next year, what you do is you sell your crypto and then you buy back in the Roth. Yeah. And then because you're, you're, he's bullish on, on the, on yeah. the crypto. Yeah. You think it, of, when you think about your Roth, that's where you want to have the high octane investments. So you're going to pay tax on that money at the 12% tax bracket. I would be careful with the simple because there could be some penalties there because if, if you're going to get rid of it, you could maybe convert it. I, I don't know where you set the thing up, uh, but I would change the simple plan moving forward into a solo 401k plan. You could put a Roth provision on the solo 401k plan. So if you wanted to go Roth, you can put in, you know, to the max of the 401k. So you could put a lot more money into the, 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 the solo 401k versus the simple. Right. Um, if you want to go pre-tax, you can do that too. You can also put on like a profit sharing plan on top of it. Now he may have employees, so we don't know that. If, True. 27, if, he probably doesn't have employees. May, but. Maybe not. But once, yeah. So you, you can do a solo or individual 401k if you don't have any employees. If you do, then you would either do a simple IRA or a, a safe harbor 401k. Got it. I just realized I set the timer for eight hours in 23 <laughs> minutes. We got, we got, we can do about a hundred questions. <laughs> so we're good. We are, we are good. Instead of eight minutes, we got eight hours. Okay. Well, we are probably seven minutes in instead of seven seconds. Got you it. got a minute and a half left. Okay. Right. Thank you. So uh, yeah, then you buy the crypto back in the Roth and then that compounds 100% tax free. So yeah. he's already had a huge gain. 9,000 is worth 44. Yeah. And then if, if he's bullish on it, now the 44,000 or whatever that you have in the Roth IRA, whatever um, amount that you want to purchase in crypto. And, you um, know, that's one of those investments that some people think we've just scratched the surface. It's going to be worth a lot more. And some people think it's crazy and it's never going to have any value. So it just depends what you're feeling. Is. Right. And, but, but the only issue is, is that you have to find a custodian that will hold the true, crypto. True. Um, you know, the, the standard brokerage firms probably... I mean, what we're seeing is, you know, ETFs and the, the, there's some investments that are coming out. Uh, but I mean, you can't buy an ETF of Bitcoin. It's a it's a derivative of Bitcoin and in, in right. some of these other um, sure. currencies. So, yep. um, so maybe you can't do that. I don't own any Bitcoin. Just yeah, I don't either. I think we should we should buy it. Just put it. You guys don't own any crypto at all. Zero crypto. No. What do you personally think about it? Well, I guess that tells what you personally think about it. You're not into it because you don't own it, right? Well, that's not, I'm totally into it. <laughs> <laughs> We're too busy. With you're just not, emo, you're not financially invested in it. I'm, I'm totally down with some crypto. Got you know? it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I can tell you the last conference I went to, I, I actually kind of reopened my mind on it. So I'm actually open to it again as well before I wasn't really. Yeah, I, I definitely think there's, it's the future in, in a lot of different areas. Um, but there's still a lot of unknowns, yep. you know? So anyway, all right. Hey, Joe and Big Al, I uh, got a fun question for you. The fact pattern is this, the dad has a revocable trust. It's a pretty standard revocable trust where on his death, it's a uh, funds of family trust, mom's the Benny. And then on her death, the trust distributes outright to the kids. Dad has a Roth IRA, and he names as the designated beneficiary of that Roth IRA his revocable trust. Dad passes in 2013. Now, since his trust is named as the beneficiary, mom cannot treat the Roth as her own. However, since the trust is considered a look-through or a see-through trust, she is uh, able to elect to receive distributions from the Roth in accordance with her life expectancy. And so she continues to take payments out from the Roth, uh, you know, 2013 following dad's death. Now, in 2020, mom passes and so now, in accordance with the trust, the family trust is then ultimately assets are distributed outright to the two children. And they're adults, they're healthy, uh, and so they're, they're able to kind of take it outright. And now the question becomes whether or not they need to follow the pre-secure act rules or the post-secure act rules. So now it's my understanding that in the pre-secure act world, when you inherit an already inherited IRA or Roth IRA, you continue to take the payments based on the 
prior owner's life expectancy. So in this case, when mom passed in 2020, she had about 3.8 years left in her life expectancy. And so the IRA administrator is saying that the Roth IRA has to be paid out within that 3.8 years uh, with her passing in 2020. Now, my question is, well, under the SECURE Act rules, in this case, the non-eligible beneficiaries um, have the 10-year window in which to withdraw assets. And so because in the trust, the kids are named individually um, and are not identifiable, my question is, wouldn't they be subject to the SECURE Act rules and then the payment uh, schedule would reset to 10 years? So they would have to clear out the Roth IRA towards the end of 2030, so in 10 years. And so that was my question and just kind of kind of wanted to get your two cents on this. Guys, appreciate the show. And then uh, Joe, maybe I was kind of curious if you ever heard, had anyone tell you that you kind of sound like the actor James Woods. thought that was always kind of funny. So thanks again for all you do, guys, and uh, take care. Hmm. James Woods. James Woods. Have you gotten that one before? Do you know who that is? James Woods? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He um, watches a lot of movies. I think he probably knows who that is. I, I do a little voiceover for him. Uh, yes, right. I call him Jimmy. That's <laughs> we're, we're pretty tough. And he, first he, of all, what the hell is Eric talking about? Hey, I got a fun question for you. There was nothing <laughs> fun about this question. This is complicated. It's like, I think hey, I my a, mom and dad died. I There's need a, a lot and we need a security. I'm like, this I is. Think, and he started out by saying the dad. So yeah, it's like the Chad. The, <laughs> the dad. Everyone knows the dad. Um, so wow. I mean, okay, where do you start? I don't know. This guy's pretty <laughs> smart. Um, uh, didn't we answer this question before? I think we thought about it and got it. And um, I'm not sure we did. So it's a, it's a it's a good question though. I mean, do do you do you follow do you, the the new rule? But yeah. since it's already being distributed, right? So it's the the distribution of the retirement account is already in distribution mode on the old rule prior to the secure act right he wants it reset when mom dies because it's he's a the beneficiary of the roth ira where he wants to sure. use the secure act to his beneficiary yeah. you know uh, to his benefit right uh, to push the payments out 10 years versus following mom's life expectancy of 3.8 right. i think he's got to pull it out in 3.8 years yeah, I think that's, I guess the answer is we don't know for sure. And I bet you, you could ask a lot of people and get they wouldn't, different, answers. different answers. Yeah. It, so, it, you know what? I bet Eric could do what he wants. And I don't think the IRS would even know. They would have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so that's your answer. Do what you want. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. And yeah, that, this is not advice by any stretch. No, this is just us having fun yeah, talking about death and retirement well, accounts. He said it's a fun question. So let's make it fun. Yeah. So, yeah, I would say... Well, doesn't the 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 Roth IRA, dad's Roth IRA, the beneficiary is his revocable trust. So <clears throat> so mom never actually owned it. So right, because she could not take it as her own because he needed yeah. the beneficiary of the trust. Yeah, and so, that's a whole nother so I, story so, of a, a, yeah, a bad planning that you don't need the trust as the beneficiary of so retirement account. This is just a guess. I'm gonna guess he doesn't get a reset because it was never in mom's name. It was never in mom's name. Yeah. So, so I think it's the 3.8 years. I, I, is, I'm would, almost positive. Would be my educated guess. Yes. We're not estate planning attorneys. But we should know the answer to this. But and the SECURE Act is, you know, it, it, it threw a wrench because before you could take the life expectancy yeah. and, and spread it out, you know, the distributions over the, the beneficiary's life expectancy. Right. The problem with this, a, a, a few things, is that Eric is pretty smart because he knows that it has to be a look-through, see-through trust for sure. Off. You, the, the beneficiaries have to be identifiable. They have to be people. There can't be a, a charity or that blows it up. Right. What he did not mention here, though, is the delivery requirement <laughs> oh you want to go to that yeah the By, trust needs uh, to be delivered october 15th of the following year uh, something like that yeah. october 15th or 31st um, or something yeah um, to the custodian so the custodian actually has to see that trust document keep key point yes I'm glad you it, it, it is a delivery requirement <laughs> so uh you know we're, we're making death fun here today so um i i, I don't know eric i, I think the rule is 3.8 we're guessing here um if you want to take it on 10, I don't think you'd probably get at it or, or, or probably you're making a best guess yeah. yourself. 
Uh, but if if the IRS hears this this playback, uh, then you'd be screwed because they know that <laughs> we <laughs> thought it was three point eight. Oh, like, Joe and Al. Oh, hey, Joe they, and Big yeah, Al, yeah, three point eight. That's that's the source. <laughs> that's the source we go to too. <laughs> That's oh. not a great idea. For a refresher on the SECURE Act of 2019 and how it changed retirement contributions, required minimum distributions, the stretch IRA, and more for both individuals and businesses, download the free SECURE Act guide from the podcast show notes at yourmoneyyourwealth.com. And of course, keep listening to YMYW for the latest tax law updates while you're drinking your paper planes or walking your dog or hanging out with your wife or whatever it is that you do when you listen to this show. And hey, in case you missed it, you can now watch Joe and Big Al answer your podcast questions on our YouTube channel. Click the link in the description of today's episode in your podcast app, go to the show notes, download the Secure Act guide, and click the YouTube icon to subscribe to us on YouTube. Hi, Joe. Grande Allen, Andy, John from Albaline, Texas. Oh, you uh, said it right. Wow. I know. I've, I've been practicing. You've been learning. Yeah. <laughs> I've been learning. I'm a learner. Um, I found an article on CNBC that will get Joe mad. Oh, I got to see this. Oh, I'm going to get fired up. <laughs> Uh, the headline is workers will soon find out how much guaranteed income their 401k could deliver in retirement. The article goes on to say, as a mandate in the 2019 Secure Act, 401k administrators will start providing illustrations on quarterly or annual statements showing an estimate of how much guaranteed lifetime income you could potentially get if the balance were annuitized. Uh, the article later gives an example of an account balance of $125,000 in an interest rate of 1.83%. The illustration would show that the participant purchased a single annuity that would um, that the amount would get them six hundred forty five dollars per month for life. For a joint annuity, the person would get five hundred thirty three dollars monthly until death, and that amount would go to the surviving spouse. Could you spitball a better option of informing people how much they could have in retirement instead of the annuity? Thanks. Um, okay, John from Albaline. I don't know why that would get me mad. This is not, I am far from mad. <laughs> I've seen you mad. You're not mad. Now. This is, um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually very happy. I'm thinking about a paper plane. <laughs> and I thought you were thinking about turning 50 so you can put 26 grand. <laughs> yes, in no, 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 that would make me mad. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's a consolation prize for turning 50. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday. Uh, happy birthday. Not. Here's a paper plane. Yes, here's a paper plane, I guess. And what? here's your 401k form. Yes. Um, uh, all right. So, uh, no, I think this is this is only going to help um, the overall retiree. Yeah. Uh, this is a guaranteed income source. It's an immediate annuity. Um, and so when, if, if you've ever heard me maybe rant on annuities in the past, it was never on a guaranteed income stream that was annuitized. Because what you're doing with this, is you're, 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 you're taking cash and then you're turning it into the insurance company for a guaranteed income for the rest of your life. Yeah, it's like buying a retirement plan, right? Exactly. Yeah, but like deferred annuities is that you're purchasing an annuity for a later income at a later time. And then they're filled with fees and things like that. Most people don't annuitize the product and they take distributions and they still get, you know, the insurance companies still get their fees. And, and I think they're sold terribly. And, you know, there's a lot of misconception and so on and so forth. But if this is an immediate annuity, you know what the numbers are. Here's a hundred thousand dollars. If you live single life, you're going to get X. If you yeah. put it, you know, spouse on it, here's what the family gets. You'll never outlive your money. Um, so I like this actually. So I, uh, I like it quite a bit. Question for you. When it says interest rate used is 1.83%, what does that mean? That's the interest rate that the annuity is paying out. Okay. That's what's paying out. Okay. Yes. That's the interest that you're probably receiving. That's your internal rate of return on the product. Okay. Is that, um, because, because here's why I'm asking it. So I just ran this for fun. $125,000 present value, $645 monthly payments, assuming a 25 year life mm -hmm. came out 3.8%. Yeah. Because you're getting principal back too. Yeah. Yeah. So it, there's a return of principal and then there's earnings. Yeah. Okay. So if you, um, so the, the 1.83 is probably so that, that's, intro. that, that's the real rate you're getting. So the 3.8 includes the money that you put in that you're getting back. Correct. Got it. I mean, and that's another thing too. When you look at if, if you take the 645 a month, there's going to be interest and there's going to be return of principal, sure. right? Return of capital back yeah, from right, that. Right. Because they're investing the $125,000. If it was just straight $645 a month, 
you know, and then at the end of life, you still get $125,000 back. Yeah. Right. Those are two different equations. Those are two different rates of return. Got it. Okay. So what we look at a couple of things is that, you know, there's the 4% rule, right? So 4% of about $125,000 is, what is that? Like forty. Two hundred dollars a year, hundred thousand. No, yeah, yeah, forty, yeah, forty-two, forty, yeah. forty-five. Okay, four. You know, something I don't. We should have my calculator. Four percent, one hundred twenty-five, forty-two-five. Yeah, um, probably. I'm gonna guess. So, the so that's what you would get. Let's say if you if you want to take a standard um, distribution rate. So when you look at sustainable distribution rate, what that means is that you don't want to pull out more than four percent out of the portfolio. So four percent on one twenty-five is what five grand. Five grand. Okay. So $5,000. So if I'm looking at, hey, if I'm going to get $5,000 a year versus, you know, $645 a month, what is that? That's, yeah, let's see. We'll get the exact 7,700. 7,700. So 7,700 sounds a lot better than right. 5,000 if I'm right. only pulling 4% out. Sure. The 4% distribution rate is assuming that the, the, the overall product is going to grow or the portfolio is going to grow at 6%. You're pulling 4% out. The other two is going right. to combat inflation and taxes. Right. Uh, but there's no guarantee that that portfolio is going to grow at 6%. No, there's no guarantee. But in many cases, you'll still have your principal at the end of the term. If it does grow at 6%, you pull 4% out in 25 years, you still have the 125,000 that right. goes to the beneficiary. Right. So I think, I mean, you look at, so the rate of return, 1.83%, that's what you're earning. That's the cot. That, that's what you're getting in exchange for having a fixed uh, rate. Yeah. I mean, you fixed income. You're exchanging, it's insurance, right? right? This is annuities are insurance. So you are insuring that you will receive X amount of dollars that you will never, ever outlive. Yeah. And it's usually to life or, or second to die life if you do it joint. And so if you both pass away in a year, then you lost, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> and so did the family because th there's nothing left. So there's nothing left. But if you live 50 years. Right. Well, so you give them $125,000, right? And then both you and your spouse die in a car accident the next month. Yeah, you got zero. You got, right? Right. You didn't even get your butt, you know? So it's just like a retirement plan. If you die prematurely, it stops unless it's a, a joint life on a spouse. So th th there's pros and cons. So then there's mortality credits. And that's how, you know, these insurance companies look at things. There's pools of life. And then that's how they come up with what these payments are going to be. And that's how they come up with, all right, you know, if, if so many people purchase this type of product, you know, some people are going to live a very long time. Some people are going to die prematurely. So they kind of take a look at a bell curve and they kind of hit the middle. And so there's actuaries that make a lot of money that are super smart. They're a lot smarter than Al and I that come up with this stuff. So is it bad? Is it, am I mad? No, I think it's awesome. I think it gives people an opportunity to say, you know what, I don't want to take any risk in the overall market and I'm going to guarantee and I'm going to lock in, but then they know what they're getting. They know what they're yeah, getting. I, I agree with that. So, so the immediate annuity, you know what you're getting. The deferred annuity is garbage. It's you, you don't know because the, the illustrations, you don't know how they're running them. Exactly. What do we got? Um, Frida's boss. Do you remember Mr. Poon? Oh my God. Oh my. We actually, yeah. I, I have actually heard from a number of listeners who's told us where that came from. Joe, I'm surprised you didn't get it. This is from the movie Fletch. I love Fletch. <laughs> Such a good movie. I've even seen that one. It was a long time ago, so I don't remember a thing. Um, hello again, Joe, Andy, and Al. All of my retirement is either in a 401k Roth IRA. I have zero dollars in traditional IRAs. I realize that the new House bill has to go through Senate approval, and there may still be changes. But as it stands now, the backdoor Roth conversion is being eliminated. That being said, I cannot find any information on whether this new bill will allow me to make non-deductible traditional contributions and just don't convert them since my basis is zero. I wouldn't have to worry about any future pro rata distribution. So in essence, this would still be a Roth IRA just disguised under the traditional name. Am I missing anything? Thanks for all your spitballing over the years. Best regards, Mr. Poon. Uh, how old is this question? <laughs> uh, it was sent to us a month ago, 11, 20, well, not even a month uh, ago, on the 20th right, that, of November. Okay, that's so a, that's about when that, that latest change came about. So the back door is not gone. You can still do a back door run for 2021, but the current legislation has it going away in 2022. 
not the back door. We changed that again. Again? Yes. Wow. Isn't it 2029 now or something? Yes. So you're okay. still good. Back door. And, then, uh, and that is assuming that Senate actually approves it, which they haven't done yet. They haven't signed off on it, right? Oh, it, may, it may come back. It may come back. So that's okay. Good. So I'm in, I was in Tahiti, not paying attention. So, so yeah, you're, you're up. You're up to date. Yeah. So um, the back door kind of went away, then it came back, and then now it's back, and then now it's gone. Who knows? So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you're going to do a back door, do it now. Um, so continue to look at that. Um, I think you'll be here. Um, so after-tax contributions can still be um, converted um, as of today, um, but that could change probably tomorrow. So, cool. On the Owl, the paper plane, old lady, Fletch, and the Godfather, plus being in a wind tunnel with Shake and Bake in the plentiful derails at the end of today's episode, so stick around. Your Money, Your Wealth is presented by Pure Financial Advisors. Click the Get an Assessment button in the podcast show notes at yourmoneyyourwealth.com or call us at 888 888- 994-6257 and schedule your free financial assessment at a time and date convenient for you from anywhere in the country. Sit on your couch, take that call, find out how to improve your retirement. Pure Financial Advisors is a registered investment advisor. This show does not intend to provide personalized investment advice through this broadcast and does not represent that the securities or services discussed are suitable for any investor. Investors are advised not to rely on any information contained in the broadcast in the process of making a full and informed investment decision. Go to yourmoneywealth.com, click on Ask Joe and Al, um, and we'll answer your question right here on the air. On the air. I wanted to say on the Al. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure if that's a good thing or bad. I don't know either. Look this up, Andy. Okay, <laughs> okay. play for plane drink. Let's Oops. see. It is an IBA official cocktail developed around 2007. Okay, what's actually in it? Bourbon. Perfect. <laughs> Check. Uh, Amaro Nonino, Ooh. Aperol, and fresh lemon juice. Okay, going to whip that up this weekend. <laughs> That's your paper plane. I'm going to have a little couple paper planes. Let's see if I can fly. <laughs> I bet you will. It might take might take three. Fly right out of my chair. Can I, can I also don't. mention real quick, Alex? Don't call your wife Jessica, the old lady. None of us like that. Especially at age thirty-five. Yeah, right. Seriously, man. If I had an old lady, that's what I would call her. <laughs> I'd be drinking my paper planes and saying, "Hey, old lady, it wouldn't last. Make me another plane. It wouldn't last long. I can tell you that. Andy's right. Come here. <laughs> you heard of a paper plane, old lady? <laughs> How would the Tesla drive today? That would be a one and done. One year and done. <laughs> On to the next. This is from the movie Fletch. Oh, when oh, Fletch yeah. goes into an office and they call him Mr. Poon, and then he goes out to the receptionist to get a phone number. And he says, you know, Frida forgot to get so-and-so's phone number. Can you let me know what it is? And she says, okay, who's Frida? He says, my secretary. She says, who are you? He says, I'm Frida's boss. Okay, now we know. I love Fletch. <laughs> Such a good movie. I've even seen that one. It was a long time ago, so I don't remember a thing. <laughs> it is so good. Do you remember the scene now? I do remember that scene. Okay. Um, have you ever seen the movie Little, Little um, The Godfather? Yep. Okay. And you know when, um, in the one of the beginning scenes where they uh, take the head of the horse. Right. And they put it in the bed. Yep. You know, the mansion there. Uh, that mansion was also in the movie Fletch. Oh. Wow, wow, that's some trivia. You, uh... That was that was Alan. Um, I, I'm trying to think of Alan's last name. Um, um, Coke Poston. Um, what the hell is his name? Anyway, um, <laughs> the guy that the killer or whatever. Anyway, never mind. Okay. Okay. Well, you did, you did rather well until that last part. Yeah, I just <laughs> totally blew it up. I just brain farted the hell out of that um, segment. Does it sound like I'm talking in a tin can? It does. Yes. Me too. The, 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 the acoustics is absolutely I'm not terrible. sure what happened because it sounded fine and then it suddenly changed I, yep. I don't know I think it's our Mr. I think <laughs> Mr. So, so yeah it's like we're in a wind tunnel it, it, it is yeah it feels like I am in Texas <laughs> With shake right and bake. Now, with shake and bake. During one of their hurricanes. You know, we got the two dogs in the back, and I'm in, like, the back of her. What kind of car does she drive? Hyundai Santa Fe Sport. Oh, yeah, Sport. she's in the Santa Fe Sport. Yeah. I'm in the back. Oh, yeah, you know, that. with all the windows down? No, for sure. I'm with the cockapoo. Yeah, right. Yeah. 
Okay. Kava poo. <laughs> That's kava. Kaka poo. Kava poo. Yeah. Kava. Yeah. I don't know. It's like. <laughs> I think that's something else. <laughs> Kava pool. Kava pool. Kava pool. I don't know. What the hell is a Kava pool? I've never heard of a Kava pool. Is it yes, you have. We've talked about it on the show before. But that's Kava. all right. It's a, it's a mix. It's, it's, it's a mix. two different types of dogs. It's a Kava in a poo. Right. Yeah, basically. Okay. Wow, and we, your we, alarm we, just went off? And then, we, and then we got a beep. I think this this show's going to blow <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> it's, we got the hook. We're done. Thanks. Thanks all for right. the show. The show's got your money or what?